Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove and thanks for joining me today. Uh, today I wanted to show you some quickie sketches on labels, uh, a fun way of making some ready to use peel off stickers with your own little doodles on them to apply to any junk journal. So uh, these are just random little spring flowers that I did, um, baby's breath and daffodils and things like that. So today we're gonna actually do some herbs. Uh, so here's my little herb book. I couldn't sleep last night, so at least I was productive. So I made this little herb book and uh, using up these little sketches that I did. So there's coriander, uh, there's sage, there's chamomile, mm, what's this one, parsley. And so I thought we would do some of these little sketches today. And then in another video, I'll show you how I put together this little little book. So I won't go into the book too much today, but I wanted to show you this is what we're gonna work on. And I think they're really quite charming. And what's nice is you can mass produce them relatively quickly, uh, you know, when you're in a sketchy kind of mood. And uh, I thought it would be fun just to show you how, how nice and easy and loose these sketches can be. So this paper that I got, these stickers, I got them from uh, a thrift shop and I paid $4 for them and I, I got a whack load and I got these a little while ago and I haven't used them since. Um, I did a video on how to use these stickers with pressed flowers and a varnish technique, so we'll try and remember to link that. Uh, you can also coffee dye these labels. You can really coffee dye any labels um, if, you're, if you uh, have a, a selection of different labels, you can soak them in coffee and they absorb uh, the coffee just like paper does you just have to be careful that they're not too too cheap a label that they ruin the glue behind by submerging them into water um but coffee dyed looks really nice but this is all i have left of coffee dyed and i wasn't wasn't gonna do some coffee dyeing right now so i came up with uh using the uh i can't talk today the ink different inks so i have this distress pack here that i got a long time ago actually and uh, it's a Jim Holtz distress it comes with hickory smoke a vintage photo uh, brown espresso and black soot and uh, it's great because you get a variation of different colors so I've applied that we're gonna do that now and then we're gonna do so you can again use any labels I just happen to have scored these labels a while ago and uh, I love them. They're really, really handy to uh, to mass produce labels. So I'm gonna move that out of the way for now. And I'm going to flip this over so we have a surface to work on. And then we'll get started. So remember these old labels from high school I remember them feeding into those old they'd feed the little strips into the feeder feet and then print the labels off Ooh, it takes me back <laughs> so I've lost my little wood thing so all I have is my piece of um, stuff that you put on the end like a little bit of velvet I guess so I'm just going to use that so I'm going to dip into a couple of different colors here and I'm really just dirtying up the labels and what I love about this is uh, I like the grunginess. Uh, now, if you don't like the grunginess, you don't have to do this. Again, you can coffee your, or dye your labels, coffee dye or tea dye your labels, whatever look you like, or you can just leave them plain. Um, I do like them to look a little bit older. So I'm gonna go into this one now, which is the gray one, the hickory smoke. And I just like to add different colors all the way around. So I'm going to do the whole page. And then once you've done these uh, little drawings, you can always scan them into your computer if you're computer savvy. I am not. Um, and you can reuse them as digital prints or whatever you want. They would obviously not be stickers unless you print them back onto a, a label. But uh, I just love reusing my drawings, trying to get as much use out of them as possible. And if you're not computer savvy like me, you can always just photocopy them. So you can see just all kinds of different colors. I keep just adding, going from one square to the next. 
really grunging out my paper, my individual labels. So, I'm still looking forward to starting to grow some herbs. Um, not that I'm a very good cook at all, but herbs do help when you can't cook like me. You're a terrible cook. Boy, do they ever add flavor and help boost the um, range of culinary in your in your uh, cooking, which is something I need a lot of help with. There we go. So I just warmed up the papers. And I now have all these nice dark and light grungy squares. So here they are here close up. All different. So we're ready to rock and roll with our sketching. So let me make sure I'm lined up here because this is pretty big. So I have, I'm using a Micron. This is a 0 0.3 and it's a very, very tiny, I don't know if you can see that or not, a very tiny little nib because I like to have that fine sketch line when I'm doing herbs. And, uh, or any little flowers on these tiny little labels. You can use anything you've got. You can use, I know if you're nervous of using a pen because you don't want to ruin it, you only have so many labels and you're scared to draw, um, use a pencil and you can erase them. So today we will be using a pen and uh, we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna try and draw as many as I can. I'm gonna bring you a little closer. Make sure that you are in frame. And uh, we're gonna doodle. So let's start maybe with some lavender. So again, with my quickie sketches, it's all about staying loose. So if I screw this one up, I still have lots of labels to play with and so on and so forth. So it's really just having fun with your sketch. So before I actually, I'm gonna, I should probably walk you through how I draw it. So I'm gonna give myself a thin stem and again, very loose. And I'm gonna start building up my shapes of lavender. And I'm just scribbling out these little little loops all out to the side. And I hope you draw along with me. I know some people are, do draw along with me, which is wonderful. I'm so excited that you're, you're wanting to learn something or improve something. It's always a wonderful feeling while I'm teaching that people are actually drawing along with me. So here's my stem coming down. I've got my little loops, so very loose. Just not a lot of detail, just capturing the form like we do in our quickie sketches. I'm gonna give myself a little squiggle here and then come down a little further and then do another one. And it's really just nice and loose doodling and bring it down and there's my lavender. And then I try to write um, and spell it right because I'm a terrible speller and I also have horrible handwriting, but I kind of like that look of the rough, the rough, you know, uneven writing. So that's lavender. So let's try, let's do some sage. So again, we're not doing a super, super perfect rendition of the herb. We, we want it nice and loose and quick and easy. So I do the same thing. I'm going to pull, what I like to do is just kind of roughly sketch in a line. Um, and it kind of guides me where the, the main leaf's going to go. And I like to, instead of going just straight, I like to give it a bit of a curve. So we're gonna start with um, a leaf up here, and then we're gonna do some side leaves. So pull it out, pull it over, and then pull it over again. And we'll do this side, and pull it over again. And you would just bring them right back to that main branch. So one of the things that helps uh, make things look more three-dimensional is adding something in front of something else. So I'm putting this leaf in front of this stem. And then I continue the stem down here. And it just gives it a little bit more, more believable 3D feel to it. And again, another little leaf. And then I'm gonna do a branch off on this side. I'm gonna give myself a leaf that kind of hides that branch. And you can slow this video down or speed it up if I'm going a little too fast for you, but I do, do wanna draw as many herbs today as possible. And then we'll do one kind of coming towards us. And then we can just scribble in a little bit more weight to this main stem by darkening it. 
kind of helps ground it a little bit. And maybe a couple little veins in the leaves, just nice and loose. Again, nice little sketches, nothing too serious. Okay, and there's Sage. I'd love to hear um, in videos in the comments like where people are from and what they would call these these herbs in their language or or it, maybe they call them something completely different even even in English say and they do uh, they but they have a different name for them so that'd be kind of fun to hear uh, so let's do some rosemary which is one of my favorites I put it in everything uh, so I did the same thing I just did an indication of a center stem. And then I'm just going to pull these long pieces off. So you see, I'm not just going out to the side because I want it to look, I'm not going to just do this because they don't just grow on one side, they grow in front as well. So we need a couple of pieces in front to make it look a little bit more believable. I'm trying to keep my hand out the way here. And I'm just going to constantly rework these lines. So one of the things you can get into when you're sketching is um, patterns. So you, if you find you're doing the same thing over and over again on the same side, it's, it's gonna look unnatural. So you don't wanna see a pattern, if that makes sense. And uh, because there's really no patterns in nature, if there is, it makes, you know, everybody takes a picture of it because it looks so unnatural. Everything's supposed to be kind of random, right? Grows randomly. There we go. So there's a little rosemary. You know, it's not super accurate, but it looks like rosemary enough that, that you can use it in your herb book and you can color it in like the color of rosemary, which is that soft kind of blue green. So let's make sure I spell this right. Rose, Mary, that one's easy. <laughs> that one I can spell. <laughs> okay, so there's rosemary. Let's try, um, let's try mint. So we'll do mint. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna do a line down, nice and loose. So you see, I don't fill it all in because I might wanna put a leaf right here. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna make it flat by filling it all in. So. I'm just going to do these raggedy little lines here because they have this nice ruffled edged leaf. And I'm just going to follow that back. So I've curved the leaf folding in on itself. And I, I have never grown mint in my garden because I understand it is it takes over. But I might try it in my new place when I start to build some gardens. And have to leave my garden behind. I'm so upset. I love my garden. And it was, you know, so much work to do. And then you just leave it when you sell the house. It breaks my heart. <laughs> but on to new and exciting things. And new gardens and new designs. So I think if I grow mint, my understanding is to make sure that I grow it in a container so it doesn't spread all over the garden. Uh, so this one, this plant has lots of veining. And you can see I'm curving my line. I'm not just going straight across. I want to curve it to match the curvature of the leaf. So mint. And you can see these come together pretty quick and you can reproduce them. So you can do a whole thing of sage right across here. So let's do some dill. Um, and I like drawing dill because it's very, it's very sketchy. So it's very loose to me and there is no worries about kind of hiding any lines how we did a broken line here because it's going to be all squiggles. And that's all I'm doing is trying to keep it light and airy like dill looks and just squiggle those lines in. I always forget to add dill to my cooking. No, no, it's not, never been my go-to. Make sure I'm still in frame here. My go-to uh, herb. I, I wish I was a better cook. It's ironic because I love to eat. <laughs> I'm always hungry. <laughs> but I still uh, not don't like being in the kitchen. Never have. 
And I watch these cooking YouTuber people and they make it look so easy and then think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make that. And then, yeah, it doesn't work out. And I hear that a lot of actually about my quickie sketches. They're like, mine didn't look a thing like yours. Well, that's okay. They're not supposed to. It's a learning curve, right? We're all going to have our own styles and ways and methods of drawing. But it, what it is, is following the techniques, just like I would follow it on, um, on the videos for cooking and, and learn slowly how to make that dish. And I have, I have had success stories. I'm not that bad a cook, but I just probably don't enjoy it much is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'm trying to say. All right, let's do, I just got some references here from some other sketches that I did. So I'm trying to remember <laughs> what herbs to draw. All right, so let's do some basil, which is one of my all time favorites. So again, I'm just gonna curve it because I don't want it perfectly straight. I broke the line and I'm gonna start with the petals. So I'm gonna do a little petal up here and a petal over here and a vein. And then of course we break off the basil when we're using it. So little ones are now growing back. So I'll put a couple of little ones in there. I'll do another one. And I like to do variations in the size of the leaf because again, we, we pick some and use it and then it regrows some leaves, which is great. So let's do a big one here. This one hasn't been picked yet. And these guys down here have. So do a couple little squiggly lines. And then maybe one more big one. And maybe a big one behind this one. So again, just slow the video down or pause the video and catch up, or maybe you're way ahead of me. Maybe you're drawing a different kind of herb. But they are just so much fun just to doodle. And there's the, so now we'll, we'll bulk up the little bit of the main stem here. Give it a little bit of weight. So nice and easy, and there's basil. Basil. Okay, what else have we got? I'm trying to think. There's time. Did I, do I have time? Yeah. Let's do some time. Am I still in, still in shot here? Such a big pad. And my, my camera's really low. So time. Do a nice thin line. And these tiny little buds. And just literally just looping out some little, or maybe give this one a bit of a stem. So if I do three here, I don't want to do three over here because it's going to start looking like a pattern. So maybe I'll do two. And then maybe I'll do one in here coming towards me. So it, it's important. What happens to you when you're sketching is you kind of get in the habit. Your hand kind of moves the same way and you start creating all these patterns. So you have to watch for that. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to do one here and then I'll do one over here. And then I'll do another one here, another one here. And you can see it's starting to look more unnatural, starting to look more maybe cartoonish or it's not so realistic because it, it's even all the way down and the plant doesn't grow like that. So you want to visually break that up by maybe adding a couple of extra and maybe making this branch a little fuller. So now it's it's starting to break it up a little bit. These two, much, these two are still too much alike. So I'm gonna add a piece here. And now it's visually broken that, that pattern. And that's important when you're sketching um, and observing things in nature, is you wanna avoid those patterns. And it's, a, it's easy to get into those patterns because like I said, your, your hand just naturally reproduces the same image. So there's time. What else have I got? I think I've got some others here. Did I do those? Sage, basil. Let's see, we'll do one more. I'm gonna take up your whole day, but I wanted to show you all the different ones. So here's some parsley, let's do parsley. And I need a visual reference. Um, I can draw certain things from my head, 
but I can't draw everything. I need a, I need a visual. So I'm just gonna do a broken line as well. Make sure you're in. And for parsley, parsley has very unique little leaves. And I don't wanna spend all day drawing that. I just wanna wiggle the line and apply the, le the wiggly texture, <laughs> wiggly, the texture of the uh, plant. But you can spend, you know, as much time as you wanna put into these and capture the real details of this plant. And then they don't have to be quick. My ideas are quickie sketches are to teach people to capture the form without stressing about it being perfect. So you're catching the three-dimensional form of the plant or whatever it is we happen to be drawing. That's the point of quickie sketches. So I just put some scribbles in here. And that's pretty much it for parsley. So it doesn't exactly look like parsley, but you get the gist of it. And again, you can get really into detail if you want. Parsley. What else have we got? Let's have a look. Uh, we did sage, it was chamomile. For chamomile drinker, you like tea? I'm just gonna make sure I'm still in frame here. In frame on this one, yeah. I hope I'm not, uh, I hope my hand's not in the way. So we're gonna do like this tiny little flower. So we've got the center of the flower. And we've got some, bud, uh, some little leaves coming out. I've never grown chamomile. And then at the bottom, we're gonna do some squiggly lines just to let us know where these leaves are gonna go. And then I'm just gonna give myself these tiny little leaves. And you see, I'm just scribbling away. And just giving it a little indication of those pretty cute little leaves. Again, you can go into as much detail as you want. It's your sketch. I think we'll do another little flower head over here. It's kind of facing away. And bulking up the... Bulk up the stem. All right, so cam o mile. Sage we did. What else did we do? Rosemary did. Lavender we did. Dill we did. Oregano. How can I forget oregano? One of the best, in my opinion. This one I'm going to do pretty straight because they do grow pretty straight. And I'm going to give myself some little baby leaves. And another little baby leaf. And it's the same as we did over here with the with the curvatures. We're just gonna keep everything kind of small on this one. Little clusters of leaves. Nice and loose, not overthinking it, not worried about it. If it doesn't work out, I'll just start again. So you can see just those scribbly lines really create the texture of the leaves. Maybe it's something a little more significant down here. And then the veining. Just little scribbles. So you can see how fast you can draw these and you, like I said, you can draw a whole page of oregano. Oregano, oregano. Mm -hmm. There we go, there's oregano. What else have we got? Mint we did. And what else are we missing? Basil we did. Did we get them all that I can think of? Thyme we did. Oh, here's chives. Let's do some chives. So chives have, make sure I'm in frame here. Chives have these really pretty little flowers. So we're just gonna basically create 
a scribble going up like this to indicate those feathery little flower bits. And then a line coming down. And then we'll do another one over here. So I just scribble away. Do, do, do. Try and ma maintain the shape of the plant. Again, nice to have a reference in front of you. So you can look at your herb, herb book, take notes on the, the plant itself. So there's, there's the flowers and they've got, of course, the parts we eat. I don't know if we eat the flowers. Do we eat the flowers? I don't think so. I think they go start going to seed or something, right? So we eat just the, the green part. And chives. That's why I made the little book because I want to write notes as I'm growing things. And tarragon. Let's do some tarragon. So I wonder if tarragon's called something else. Because I think, um, what's the other one I was thinking of? Like cilantro, for example. Is it called coriander in the UK? I mean, I was born in the UK, but I can't remember much about it. I moved to Canada when I was younger. And, uh, when I, I watch a lot of different recipes on TV, it always has uh, coriander, and to me, it looks exactly like cilantro. So I guess I could Google it. But if you know, let me know. And uh, let me know what your favorite herbs are and what you grow in your garden. So here's tarragon, and tarragon has this very kind of thin little pieces with a a significant amount of a stem in between. Tarragon. T E O oh, no T A R R A G O N. See? Terrible speller. T A. Tarragon. Okay. So I think uh I think I got the most of them. Oh, there's coriander. Should we do coriander? You can always fast forward if you've seen enough of my drawings today. So we'll do the same thing, just a thin line and coriander and flower here. Don't know much about coriander. Don't use it very often. So do we eat the flower part or the leaves or both? And I'm just doing the squiggles here to indicate the little flower heads. So try it again. So you see I'm creating too much of a pattern here, almost perfectly across, same height, same shape. So I'm gonna break that up by adding another one here and maybe another one here. And you can see I'm just squiggling it. So it just indicates that flower head without having to do all the detail. Okay, and then we'll bulk this up a little bit to hold that weight. Because some more stems. As if the flower has come off those. And then we'll give it a leaf because I don't know, again, if we eat the leaf part or the flower part. There's so much I have to learn. And I'm still looking forward to growing them this year. Uh, I'm going to try and introduce them right into the garden and try and use them up in my cooking because we'll, we're going to be living in a trailer for a little while while our house is being built. At least that's the plan. And... Uh, so I'd really like to get into the outdoor gardening because we're going to be doing a lot of barbecuing. Again, the plan. <laughs> there. Coriander. C-O-R-I-A-N-D-E-R. I hope. I hope that's how you spell it. Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, there's some herbs for us. So I'm going to back you out again. There we go. And I'm going to move this background so you can see here. I'll move it closer just so you can kind of see all the different herbs that we've used. And all our little quickie sketches. And they are ready just to peel right off and use in our little book. And you can do pages and pages of different themes and different things and they're just ready to peel off and what's really nice about these sheets so like I said here's one I did earlier with with flowers like little different flowers that if I wanted to do a spring book or something is these also 
kind of come apart like this. So you can fold this up and then tuck it in a pocket in your book and they are ready to rock and roll when you're ready to use them. So there's that idea too, which is great. So if you do happen to stumble across this sort of thing in um, a secondhand store, grab it because they are so much fun. They're great. And they really, they're very versatile and lots of fun. So that's today's video. Thank you for stopping by. I uh, hope you like the video. If you do, please subscribe and uh, follow along for more. And next uh, video, we'll, uh, I'll hope to have this uh, being filmed next. And uh, we'll make this little horn book together using our little sketches. So you can doodle away on labels, whatever you have. And even if, again, if you don't have labels, not a big deal. Just use a piece of paper and sketch. Just have fun sketching. All right, guys. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.